uh, Greg Meeks for the uh, renovation of 21 se room 2172. Very impressive. Thank you. Um, uh, and hey, sadly, uh, and this should be bipartisan. Mr. Wilson for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for being here today, and we appreciate your service, and congratulations to Chairman Mike McCall and Ranking Member uh, Greg Meeks for the uh, renovation of 21 room 2172 Rayburn Building to be back uh, with adequate lighting, too. <laughs> and so this is this very impressive. Thank you. Um, uh, and hey, sadly, uh, and this should be bipartisan, all of us should be facing, uh, we're in a war we didn't choose, between dictators with rule of gun invading democracies with rule of law. And uh, America, uh, I, I believe, sadly, today, with the open borders, too, you add that in, uh, is a greater risk of attack, of imminent attack, than ever before, as the FBI has indicated. With that in mind, with the axis of evil, uh, war criminal Putin in North Korea have just uh, had unprecedented uh, ballistic missile uh, cooperation uh, with uh, war criminal Putin firing indiscriminately uh, North Korean missiles uh, against civilians of Ukraine. What's being done to try to address this? Because it also uh, is a direct threat to our great allies of South Korea and Japan. Yes, thank you for that question, and I totally agree. Um, any relationship that we're seeing, you know, with between uh, the uh, Russia and the North Korea is very concerning. Um, and one of the things that we started doing already is last month we have already uh, started doing sanctions. Uh, as a result of this. And we are being very, uh, very vocal. We are working with partners uh, in multilateral settings to also see how we all can work together to address this issue because so much of this is multilateral, working together with sanctions. And that's what we're doing uh, to this date, and we're going to continue to focus on this issue. And uh, additionally, bipartisan, uh, I'm really grateful to see uh, our leadership here uh, so concerned correctly uh, about the uh, providing of uh, equipment to uh, deter uh, the People's Republic, the Chinese Communist Party from attacking Taiwan. That needs to be done immediately, and so please look into that. Additionally, mm -hmm. uh, there's been a uh, request and uh, provision has been signed off uh, by our leadership in the House and Senate for rifles to be provided to Israel. What's the status of providing that? This has been held up, uh, and to me it's just inconceivable uh, at a time of war that we would delay and the rifles should be uh, provided. Uh, and uh, when can we expect that to be approved? Thank you for your question. Once again, I want to reiterate how important we, we see the situation in Taiwan and our efforts to really uh, move as fast as we can on that. On the rifles, we are still deliberating that within the, within the administration. So we, there's nothing that I can report on that to date. But that's an issue we're still working on. And, and, and indeed, they lost uh, rifle capability uh, when uh, we had the Hamas uh, puppets of Iran uh, invade. And it, it, there's just no uh, reason for delay of something as basic as rifles. And so I hope that's uh, advanced. And, and then uh, also bipartisans should be interested in small marginal reactors. Uh, and that is that how critical they can be with technology uh, to promote uh, work with our partners. I know that uh, Romania has taken a real lead on trying to develop uh, small marginal reactors. What is uh, your department doing in working with our allies to promote small modular reactors? And, uh, and hey, for immediate manufacture, uh, I even have a location, Savannah River Nuclear Laboratory. Yes, we're doing quite a bit. And thanks for recognizing the work that we're doing uh, in Romania. Uh, we are pressing forward very hard on small modular reactors around the world. And we are working very closely with our allies. We're working with the G7. Uh, and recently at the at the COP28, we had 22 countries agree to um, triple nuclear uh, uh, technology uh, by, 20, by 2050. Uh, we have a number of countries who are working to promote um, more funding in this issue. So yes, we take it very seriously. We'll work with allies, G7 partners as well, to promote small modular reactors around the world. And, and the benefit of that would be uh, the security uh, for a, a territory <laughs> such as Guam. Uh, which is so critical, three hours uh, from Shanghai, three hours from Tokyo, three hours from Manila. Uh, again, uh, a floating aircraft carrier uh, that uh, needs uh, energy independence. And, uh, and so it's just so clear. Uh, and then uh, you also have uh, examples of, uh, hey, resort areas like Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. We would like to have, in the event of a hurricane, 
uh, again, small modular reactors. And hey, we've had small modular reactors on aircraft carriers and submarines. This just need to be advanced, and, uh, and, and the production uh, should be approved and uh, should be accelerated. I yield back. Gentlemen, yields. Chair recognizes Mr. Keating. Uh, Greg Meeks for the uh, renovation of 21 se room 2172. And we are being very, uh, very vocal. We are working with partners. Uh, in also, uh, it's a direct threat to our great allies of South Korea and Japan. have just uh, had unprecedented uh, ballistic missile uh, cooperation. Uh, we appreciate your service and congratulations to Chairman Mike McCall and Ranking Member Abram Building to be back uh, with adequate lighting, too. <laughs> and so this is this very missiles uh, against civilians of Ukraine. What's being done to try to address this? Because it, with uh, war criminal Putin firing indiscriminately uh, North Korean 